All right, guys, welcome back to part two. If you liked the first part, make sure you go ahead and click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, definitely help me out. It helps other people find my channel. Subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, this is going to be the full maintenance and service tutorial reassembly of the Daiwa Steez SVTWS in the 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. And also, try not to get ahead of yourself. There are quite a few pitfalls in this reel that if you don't, put the reel back together in the very specific order, you'll end up having to back out five minutes, ten minutes worth of your work because you won't be able to get the pieces back in the way they're supposed to go, plain and simple. There's also a couple spots where you have to pay close attention when you are reassembling it that you don't bind up certain other bits and pieces in the reel um, once you start tightening down the screws. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it, hope you learn from it, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. All right, now we're gonna start putting her back together. And this reel has a very specific way in which it needs to go back together. So we're gonna start off with the worm gear shroud and the T-wing. Don't forget to put the T-wing back in. And we're going to make sure that the little white piece of plastic is oriented properly. And in order to tell that they're functioning properly. Look how they're aligned. On to the thumb bar. I already put the bearing back in. This bearing has that little sleeve that's on the inside of it. Make sure the flange side is facing the handle. So this bearing, see how it goes back in? Very important. Now, before this goes in, very important, you have that detent. We're going to lightly grease it. <laughs> Don't ask. And we're also now going to install the thumb bar. Again, very particular how this reel has to go back together. I'm not exaggerating, that's not I'm not joking. Now make sure the little tab for the T wing. See the little see this little black piece here? See how it's got that slot? If you look underneath, you'll see that little white little stud coming down. Make sure it gets in Boom. All right, good. See how it's kind of keyed there? It's not going to go anywhere. See, that's good. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Let 
This is going to be for your pinion engagement and disengagement support. And a very important thing to note, see these little nubs on the bottom here, here and here, they are designed to go into here, they're keyed, there, and there. Alright, now with everything aligned properly, we're going to go ahead and install the thumb bar actuation lever and spring. That's the lever, and that's the spring, and we know that the long arm goes into the actual lever itself and the short arm is going to go into the frame. So we're first going to start off with the short arm and the lever and we also know that this post has to go up into this white hole. So how do we do that? It's very strange. On this reel, it's one of the easiest reels to do. But it's the other stuff you have to worry about. So these two pinion support stud screws have to be backed out about 75% of the way. That's my recommendation. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and lay this elbow on that spring. And we're going to kind of rotate it up and it's going to wrap back on itself. But at this point, don't load the spring. Do your best not to load that spring. Alright. So right here, we're going to lift this piece up a little bit. And be very mindful of this pain and the <clears throat> detent up here. And at the same time, see how the detent's kind of rolling out? I'm going to pick it down because you want this thumb bar up. See how it's coming out already? If that comes out, you have to dismantle all the screws in that plate. So, thumb bar up still. Detent is clear on the flat part of the track, not in the detent hole. Now that we have that there, with your middle finger, right here, push on the bottom part of the thumb bar. Until it gets underneath. Double check that detent, it looks good on my screen, on my, uh, from my angle. You can see it right up here, underneath. Now, the post is under the white. When you lift up this bottom post here, try not to scratch the frame. It's now at this point, it's starting to load up. But always keep your finger on that, always. I put some tension on that. And keep in mind, it's not in there. 100% yet, now it is. Gonna lift it and get that bottom post over. Now it's in. Now, this is how you want to get this tightened up. Remember those two posts on the bottom of this plate here? They have to be lined up 100%, otherwise, you can damage the reel. I'm not snugging these down very tight at this point. certain. Now, I kind of stopped paying attention to what was going on in the front here, but with my fingers still in place here, make sure that the little, little stub fits that little groove here. And at the same time, make sure this little tab on the white little piece of plastic, the, fr the anti-friction piece of plastic, is keyed into that part of the frame. Now, because we don't want to have to do that ever again in life, keep your finger on that spring 
and grab the biggest screw of the reel. And with the size zero, go back in and make sure you have a good alignment on that washer. Before you get it down tight, give this a press. So that way that washer is going to have something to line up against. Now, we break anything. Ooh, that feels good. I have my finger on that screw. The detent is functioning properly. At the top, you can see it kind of rolls out. Now we can lightly grease down here. <laughs> it's not lightly greasing, so I'm just messing with you. All right, now we're going to go back into the screws here, snug them. That is working nice. All right, now with the worm gear fully cleaned off, and this is an aluminum worm gear, so be careful. dangerous. You have the keyed end that's going to go into the base of this idler and we're going to lightly grease this. Now we're going to get this little retaining clip on. Thankfully on this one, this idler is so tight to the shaft, it's almost makes it easier to get it on. My hands are a little slick, so I don't want to stab myself. So be very careful when you go about reinstalling this one because you got to go in at kind of a an elevated angle or you kind of can give it a twist so I'll give it a twist first mm, no she doesn't want to chooch it's a little bit larger blade Oh, yeah, she's going. I'm going to go back and finish it off with the other screwdriver. And she's good. Good enough for the girls I go out with. Nah, she's not. There we go. That was a little trickier one because it the back side is kind of lifted a little bit, so the little the the center portion of the E didn't want to go into the slot. Always inspect. All right, now see how that's going to go in there. Your worm's installed. Not really. If it was only that easy. And I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of grease right in there. I don't want it to slather up and slow it down. That's just force a habit, honestly. 
All right, next up, the bearing on the opposite side. And before we attack our other best friend, being the E-clip over here, we're going to seat the paw. Alrighty, put a little dab of grease in there. washer on top of the bearing. We installed the pole <clears throat> in the level line so that way we can push outwards on it. And we're going to go ahead and use my silly tool again. Who's jealous? Bingo. That's pretty pretty spiffy. It works for the little ones. It works for the ones that are wide open. So there's a screwdriver. We can tell nobody though. Alright, now, now that we have that ready to rock and roll, or that end, now we're ready to rock and roll. Alright. So what we're gonna do now is make sure that the plastic insulating piece and the aluminum piece maybe isolating would be the best Diver really didn't want to put much of dissimilar metals in contact with each other when they made this reel which is fine by me especially being magnesium Size zero or size double zero. All right, now, light coating of grease. Completely off camera, light coating of grease. That's way too much. Just saying, don't do that. All right, now it's time for the main gear and the drag stack. And I'm just gonna put it, I probably don't even need to do this because the gear, the, the, the washers are so heavily greased out of the box. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of drag grease on that bottom washer since I did clean it. And just smear around the schmoo. Gonna put the basement and the first floor in. And we're gonna make sure it stays where we want it. Now it's good to go ahead and put a little light coating of grease on the bottom here. Nothing too crazy. That was the drag grease, mind you. For fresh water, it doesn't really matter. And this is your drag stack. So you have your first carbon washer, first metal washer, second carbon washer, third metal, which is also the eared, and you're making sure those tabs face that way. Then finish it on off with the carbon and the middle 
Now we have the pinion support and the pinion. So, how does this work, huh? Simple. You want to have the angled cuts facing the spool. And the easiest way to install this is to seat the pinion one leg and the second. And then you'll see it's kind of up high over the main gear. It's now seated. It's right down there. With a drag stack back in, we're going to put the chin back on this reel. Really easy. Slides it right in. That's not the third time in a row I did that. I'm just saying. All right, now we're going to install this screw on the other side. Finger on the drag stack. sleeve. All right, now where do we go from here? Um, let's grease the pinion in the main gear. And uh, again, less is more. Um, putting that much grease on is not necessary. I don't recommend it. That's just how sometimes I like to do it on certain reels. And I'm experimenting with this grease, so I like to see how it's going to run out. So now we have the springs reinstalled here. And... Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. So the pinion is going to run into this side plate bearing. So it's got support on both sides. Uh, that's what that bearing underneath here was with that sleeve. And if you look here, this white piece here is what the springs run on. So that they're not scratching up the frame. So Daiwa really uh, paid attention to what was going on with the uh, the dissimilar metals and the fact that it's magnesium. Something that on a couple other magnesium reels um, there was no extra precaution taken. And let me just run a Q-tip on the inside of this uh, anti-reverse bearing. I'm not going to pop it off. Basically you take a, uh, ooh, this one's going to be tricky. Um, I might be able to get it out if I take a 
socket or a nut driver and press down there. Um, I'm not going to. I just ran a Q-tip that had a little bit of grease on. And hopefully that will remove any of the contaminants, if there were any. And when you push this through, the bearing popped out, which is no big deal. And let's use the screws. And I'm using, don't follow my lead here, but I'm just using a, a double zero just to get the screw started. I'm not even going down to snug at all. I find for me, when I do that, it saves me from the blade of the flathead screwdriver impacting the frame. See, I'm, I'm not even getting to snug. A drop of oil on her here is good. Now we have this thin washer, also known as fragile, so do be careful. Clicker cup. The two Bellevilles. Now this is a um, kind of a the way I'm setting this reel up is gonna be a little bit lighter. Maybe for jerk baits. So I'm gonna have them opposing like that versus nested like that because I want it to be a wider range. So basically, it's gonna be a little bit more gradual from zero to sixty. It'll still get to 60, but it's going to get there a little bit slower. It's going to take more turns. Just give me one second. You always want to make sure that they're seated on top of that cup. You don't want them to get stuck on that leg of the click spring and then silver side coated side with black anti uh, stick stuff anti friction anti friction friction faces up this is the nut that actually compresses drag stack is the spring that I guess you need what's the easiest way to say it uh, it keeps the star spaced evenly and just gonna use a little bit of grease on the inside here and I'm actually gonna wipe it out it's really not needed but force of habit you can leave it dry and just remember whenever you put grease on something that's on the outside of the reel it will attract more dirt so what we do now is Lay it on top. Don't push too hard on this because what you want to do is you want to get your finger up underneath there and kind of give it a little push. And now she's on. Back side of the handle washer. Handle. Handle. 
10 millimeter handle nut. Spool. Hold, please. Turns like a kitten, huh? Doesn't get any better than that. Well, it does if you uh, aren't using a ceramic ball bearings. Just to give you an idea, that was a. Uh, these are full of full ceramics. Alright, I think uh, she's about done, ready to fish. About 20 seconds free spool, not too bad. And that is using a TSI 321 cut with alcohol from about, about a week or two ago. Now if you hear a little raspiness in it, that's what happens when you use a TSI 321 in the worm gear. But Corrosion X, which is this stuff here, uh, that's number two as far as what I usually use. So I have TSI 321. And Corrosion X, the two main oils that I use, but this was all 321. She feels great. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, fairly straightforward reel. The only time it starts getting tricky is when you really start going deep into it. I mean, otherwise, it's everything from the star drag inward is standard. It's only three screws. Pop the side plate off. Lube as necessary. Um, oftentimes, you don't even have to get in past the, the worm gear. It's just not necessary. And nine times out of ten, if you send your reel in for service, don't think they're taking that apart either. Um, so yeah, that's going a little bit, you know, further. Uh, if you fish it in salt water, that's when you really want to start going that deep. But I don't have for in the Northeast fishing 100 size reels doesn't apply for salt water. Maybe down south, but not up here. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the comment section. Uh, make sure if you did like this to click that like button and also to subscribe. That way other people can find my stuff easier. All right, guys, take care. And as usual, thank you. And I appreciate your time. And I know your time is valuable. All right, take care, guys.